to you. Uh, I'm going to call the order the Purchasing Financial Management um, Committee. It is 5 o'clock, uh, May 20th, 2024. And I'd like to get us started with a in the crew. Do I need a motion to start the meeting? No, I can call the order. Um, have uh, Commissioner Brown lead us in the invocation in. Lord, we're grateful for each and every day that we are alive. Help us always be of service to you. Help us to do the things that are right and in your sight. We're always mindful that we, as servants of yours, should be following your commands and help us to, to do the things for this county that we should be doing without our own personal interest getting in the way. We're grateful. Help us to be grateful for what we do have. Never overlook the fact that our health is fleeting. But Lord, we come before you tonight to try and discuss the business of this county and to take ourselves out of the way and, and do the best thing for the people of this county. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Everybody can take a moment to just go through the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Can we add one item? We need to discuss the libraries were closed on 5-9. Are we going to pay them part-time or not? That's the same question we had back at the snow days before they sent out their time. The policy doesn't say that, but back at the last snow day, you paid them for the regularly scheduled part-time, but I think it's in Hendersonville doesn't have any regularly scheduled part-time, but they, they want to but they want to pay them anyway, so we need to kind of determine how to handle that before they send down, before we pay them. Can we okay. add that under the Yeah. But, but what the Library part time. I was going to say part time employees when the buildings are closed. They don't really thought out of a lot of them. Need a new motion? Yeah, I'll make, I'll remove my motion. I'll make a motion pass the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, I'd like to recognize the public. Uh, we do have some time later to talk specifically about the Kronos, but anybody that would like to talk about Kronos or anything else now, happy to hear from you. you you're welcome to talk about anything. We're going to have more time to talk about Kronos later on, so if it's specific to that and you've got some place to go, feel free to say it now, or I don't want to hold you till the very end. So. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hold it, that's fine. I think we'll get through the stuff here unless you want to go now. Okay, perfect. And I'm I'm here on that also, but I'll wait to to get to it. Okay, because we'll suspend the rules and there won't be any issues at that point about time or any favor or something. Um take a minute to look at the minutes from last meeting. It was back when there was a snow day. The libraries all paid their part time when the buildings are closed. In the past, we've always considered part time to be ineligible. It says when the buildings are no work day due to weather called by the I think it says county. 
county mayor or county executive when I can't remember what time it was written that the employees would be paid but that was always considered to be full-time regularly scheduled it does not specifically say it excludes part-time so the libraries ask if they had regularly scheduled part-time could they be paid that time you determined to pay but when we talk in further detail Hendersonville says they have no regularly scheduled part-time they're just basically providing the time so it kind of brings up another makes a little muddy so it's the same thing about the um, rain day it probably needs something that at some point needs to go back and be addressed on the personnel policy to kind of straight to I'll second. I'll second. I'll call that mayor's. All in favor? Uh, aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, on the agenda item two, report of the committee chairman. Um, only thing I've got is both Todd and I would like to be out for vacation next month, so we'll probably need to cancel June unless there's pressing topics and can be scheduled, but if nobody's opposed to canceling next month. But it's a good time to cancel. All right. So. <laughs> Cancel next month to give everybody some time back for budget season, and then we can reconvene in July. Mr. Mayor, anything for me? No report, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sibbett? I have no report, Chairman. We do have a report of the trustee. Um, if anybody's got any questions, it's just about updated numbers, I believe, from the stuff that we normally look at. April 18th. The request was received on April 25th for an emergency purchase. 
your emergency purchase procedures for two things, to allow if there's an immediate emergency to allow you to eliminate the issue and then get a PO, or to avoid bidding. The request was for $4,000, so the reply back was that you need to get a budget amendment because it's been seven days and that you, uh, it's not an emergency at this point because of the time has passed. I came back, the mayor signed it on the, the actual proposal had the 24th, the mayor signed it on the 25th, and the PO was issued on the 26th. Also, the other issue that we had was the actual contract signed said that the county was responsible for attorney's fees, which actually violates the um, resolution 24-01-22 and another policy. So the actual two things that's an issue at this point is that the actual contract was signed before the PO and the actual contract contained provisions that weren't supposed to be in it. So how we fix this? Just to prove it at this point. I think it was, they were doing an emergency and it wasn't necessarily an emergency at that point, so it delayed the uh, issuance. And then on the policy deal, it's a new policy, so I think it was dismissed. So I think at this point, we needed to work just to go ahead and prove it and to try to make it a valid expenditure. Does that work, John? Uh, motion to approve. That's the elevator. We're talking about the elevator. Yeah, the elevator. Yeah, no, I think we're talking about the elevator. That's the only thing. Correct. That's all I'm going to do. Have we finished this? No, it's not put on there. It was 4000 but it was amended to 165000 because they ran into some issues. So now, but, but it started out. So I've still got a couple of questions on this right here. Um, that 150000 for the sheriff's office at the top, was, was this for the uh, amen stuff or what? I don't remember. It's been back since July. We can get a copy of it for you and look at it. Yeah, the only issue it was they signed the purchase order before the PO, and that's the only time all year. So I granted the one exception, and we went on. Went on. So I'd, if you if you send me an email, we can have that pulled for you. Okay. And then one down there at the bottom, the EMS uh, number eleven, thirty-eight thousand dollars. That's where they pay back money for their. Um, that's where they pay back. They have a um, contract for collections. So if the revenues are higher, the collections are more, and they just exceeded the amount. And I can grant exceptions for that, so I did because it was an honest despair. It was actually needed. So all these, all these actually were. Yeah, I think most of these are just policy issues. And they just needed yeah. for the. So I granted exceptions, so I ran out of exceptions, and then we just them down here. Nothing, nothing wrong. Nobody's with done anything to try so. to buy anything they should have missed it that way. Correct. Can I go back to that EMS? Just a quick question on that. It says revenue was higher in the month. Are you saying that you pay them in advance to collect, or is that just a contract fee? We, have, we have a contract fee because we, we outsource. outsource. It's a percentage-based contract? Yeah, we outsource the um, revenue collections or the receivables. They do a little bit of receiving over there, but by and large, it's outsourced, and there's a contract on it. So the larger the revenue, the larger the fee would be, so it ended up running over. If I'm thinking about the right one, and I can verify that's what that is, but I'm not 100% sure. So, are you, are you paying them based on an invoice that says they collect X dollars in revenue? Mm -hmm. percentage. Why would you need a purchase exception for that? What do you mean? I mean, we do that part of the contract. What makes this an exception? They ran over them, they ran over your PO, the total available for that year. Would they exceed their PO? And if they exceed it, I have to grant them an exception to exceed. I should have said exceeded on there. Um, so we cut them a check for 38807 Yes. And there was documentation to support that? Yeah. There's no dollars that documentation. So we amended it up. We had documentation. Or you'll get a PO and then the actual invoice will come in with a payment. It'll be verified and signed off on by EMS and then reviewed through finance. So you got to have several procedures. Do we have a regularly scheduled maintenance plan for that elevator? Is there? Yeah, there are regular inspections done by the state. State. And I mean, how did this happen? Did, did they, they the motor went out on it. Yeah, I know the motor went out at some point. The, the, the oil. 99. Yeah, the 99 
have been complete on, on drug sheet here, green and all. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean by own policy? They're okay. doing their own thing? They're separate policy. going through photos? No, they have their own personnel policy. Yeah. Yeah, several, several have their own personnel policy. They're statutorily allowed to, and they have their own. So, I, well, so they're not going to do photos? No, no, it doesn't affect that. It only, that. it only affects how chronos will be set up. Okay, I just... Or, uh, the county clerk has their own policy to register deeds, highway, um, circuit, there's several of them. The 13 total policies. So there's 13 different personnel policies in the county. Yeah. And what you run into is if the policy is not 100% clear and there's several departments, all those departments may be doing stuff slightly different that does fit within the policy. So that's what we run into. For instance, the uh, libraries were under the county's policy, and we have our five, five libraries. All five libraries were doing things slightly different. And they have odd scheduling, so that's one we did recently with the libraries. There's five of them. How many employees do they have? So that's all that's, that this comments part is. It's not, not a scheduling uh, situation. Now, right now, it was, it was what your about third or fourth largest department we just are completing it right now. Your, your, all your largest departments are, are finished. Yeah, that's all that you got. Got two thirds of it, over two thirds of it down. Good. Last of it. <coughs> so, what we, we're, we're working, we, we've already got the the uh, stuff through budget as to how the play for uh, Toby was going to be given as far as the $20 million in conjunction with moving the purchasing over. And we My understanding of what you guys proposed is to commit $20 million out of capital uh, contingent upon that he follows the private act. Yeah, that's right. And have that by September. That, that's what, what that was my understanding of your proposal when we have the minute taker. Is that what the proposal was? Yes, sir. Yeah, September was the first for purchasing order and then be on Carlos by the end of the year. But there, there will be some, we need, we need to have another meeting in the, on the 30s. There needs to be some discussion because the word was you guys said commit 30 million, which means if you're committing, we'll show you the commitment on the uh, budget, but it'll still have to go back and be appropriated or something. And the other thing that I was talking to legal today, and I think they're going to work with county technical, we have a private act from 1933 that has a whole slew of requirements for the highway department that I feel a lot of them are probably in conflict with general law and disappear, but we need to determine which ones are and that it affects this. The private act itself says they're in charge of the, I heard you say pretty much everything. But I don't think it's, I think road law has trumped a lot of that out, but we need to figure out what portion. This is why we just for the highway department. From 1933. And we think most of it's been trumped. So what will happen if general law conflicts with it directly? It's gone, but if there's no conflict in general law, it'll still be sitting there, from my understanding. So we need to determine right now which portions are not applicable. Uh, that's another part that kind of goes into this large amount of of money because we've got to determine if it does fall back into that private act in some way. So, so is it 12, 2012 and 1933? Is it conflicting? I mean, they don't conflict at all. In 2012, you've got the first It's two separate issues. Okay. This one's strictly a highway related. The 33 is strictly highway related. Yeah. The 2012 is financial management. And obviously, the, the 33 is more of management driven. It says they are charged with general control of the budget, the control of the roads, control of which roads are repaired. It says there's supposed to be a list of the, uh, basically not verbatim with the shape of each road. And a lot of that's probably not conflicted with, but a lot of it is. In other words, I know there's a specific section in, in road law and state statute that probably conflicts with a lot of that. It'll make it disappear. But it really needs to be looked at closely, and, and um, I think that's going to be one issue. Is that something that we're really close to the top of our list of? I just I mean, found out about it today. Yeah, after we did the, or after they did the thing, we did the approval mm -hmm. and brought it to you guys Friday and Friday. I just don't think I have to date. I think it's section. You never had a thought. 
338. It actually talks to the incumbent was in 1932, and they were grandfathered in. And if you read, it's really funny. Really interesting. They have some. We're not in North Carolina. We always did. We had a, we had a, uh, a population class that made Sumner County up when it was like 20 some thousand to 20 some thousand. That got it. <laughs> we almost 10 to 1 when that act was approved. At the time, the committee could, they, they were to post the waste on the bridge and they could do one levy a $20 fine for violating that. And you got to think 1932, what, $20? So that committee, according to that private act, the committee can also condemn property with them in the domain, but I don't know if that's still in place. So. There's several things in that private act. It needs to be really looked at closely. Can I, can I get uh, going back to the 20 million dollars that you're talking about? So it's an additional funding of 20 million for Toby. The discussion was Toby said he needs additional funding past the five year average for highway significantly past it, or what, what was earlier had. What we're looking at is debt service is falling off, and your debt service fund really shouldn't have a really large balance in it. So the thought process was to potentially, for one time, by relevying taxes, move a significant portion, about $30 million, from your debt, 20 to $30 million out of your debt service over in your capital projects that would allow amount to be committed to the highway fund. The commitment would be, over the next two to three years, to give them $20 million where they can fix all the roads that were in the worst shape that would get them back into a maintenance mode, which would blow the overall growth of the cost or the expenditure, and hopefully outrun some of the inflation we're feeling right now on roads and bridges and concrete. That was the original proposal. And the other proposal came out in budget about the private act that was uh, added during budget committee. And so what came out of the budget committee was that before they would move forward on the 20 million the private act would have to be implemented from a purpose perspective. My understanding for they were appropriating the funds at September, was it September 1st, that they was to have the purchasing done and by the end of the year to have the, the chronos done. And they, they only moved at the end of the year because of my concerns of meeting the September 1 deadline and talking to uh, an here. Their rules and their personnel policy in chronos are a lot of it's done. So. September 1, but the uh, sections of the we can fix it. Probably by, we can probably hit the September 1 date if they work with us well. If I think you're asking, does the 33 Act have any bearing on the decisions of the main budget? Yep. No. Okay. It's yeah. about them getting into compliance. The 33 only comes in before they approve the $20 million for, for the road superintendent. Does the Highway Committee have to approve that to plan the amount and the condition of all the roads. If you read that act, then verbatim the way it's written, then that needs to go back, including everything else, to that road committee for approval. The question is how much of that's disappeared because of a conflict with the general law. That's something that needs to be looked at real closely right now. Because you could get approval plan that's not been approved by the private act at this point. So where are you in total? We bid quite a large amount of stuff earlier, several bids. Um, when we were doing the ARP, I think concrete steel and several, but after that, we've not really. No. After that, we didn't do anything else past the bidding. At this point, he's, I, I'm not really sure you need to talk to, to Mr. Ellis because kind of what I'm looking at with very few changes, the policy should be ready for highway. There's no reason we could. Can we not really sure? Table this direction of conversation that we're getting off track with Cronus and just going down the purchasing rabbit hole with Toby not here. So I don't know, I'd rather have Toby here than not to speak. Not to the <laughs> on the Highway 33 Act. Um, uh, can we move on to the RP? Is there anything we need to review or approve here? Well, you probably need to review if that's the one that we've. Um, basically, the discussion is because. You got to remember, all the staff in my office are, are doing regular jobs. So basically, the chronos has always been, for a better word, something we've been given in addition to our regular duties. The purpose of the RFQ 
if you finish up and if you read through there, it tells you right now what you've got left to finish. They are, there's 12 departments remaining with seven unique personnel policies. So basically what this would do is us providing the data to the consultants. The consultants would go out and work with the department heads of finance. Set up or refine all of your chronos rules to follow your personnel policies. They would also, the only or another consultant together, would evaluate the personnel policies to make sure they are in compliance with Fair Labor Standards Act and including the rules. This is to do with the new ones that we are implementing. Because the Act says that and it is best practices, I would recommend that after the chronos is completely done, that we have a full audit on the system for compliance with Fair Labor Standards Act to make sure that none of the policies do conflict or anything we're doing. Because there's hundreds upon hundreds of rules, especially with the Sheriff's Department, they've got hundreds of rules. And right now we do have a line in the budget requesting it based on a just a, just a guess at this point. And to kind of give you some of the history of how it's been handled in the past, originally back in Back in June of 2012, the county funded the consultant's plant, plant Moran to, to help us select you know, the ERP and the software so we had these consultants and outsourcing them for. Uh, back on June 18, 2012, uh, we took Plant Moran, the Financial Management Committee approved it, the county commission uh, voted on it and funded it. Back in 2012, June 18th on September 17, 2012, they came back to Financial Management Committee and gave a slideshow presentation. On August 19, 2013, the committee approved and the commission later approved the funding and everything else for me to go out and based on the RFQs and the bids to contract or negotiate with Tyler and Eunice and Kronos for the ERP contingent upon whether to get a degree or move on to the next best bidders. So the whole thing was bid back in 2012-13. To answer, there was a consultant involved in bidding and the schools involved in the regional selection was made. So this is uh, basically a, a set of consultants to complete the implementation phase. What's well, somewhat basic right under this? Is it enough? Do you need to do what you need to do? We put a hundred thousand in the budget. I don't know, we have no idea. I think it would do this implementation working with us. The question is how much additional costs is a consultant going to want to evaluate wage and hour because they're probably going to get attorneys involved and everybody should be done cost fair. Mm -hmm. but, but, and if it, if it comes back to be it's over the amount, then we probably need to look at a meeting and go ahead and make sure everybody gets compliance with wage and hour. Phase two, I would say, is come back and have the whole system audited for wage and hour compliance. So you're saying $100,000 is enough right now to get the thing That's in place? Guess. What? That's a guess we're going to drop a bid. A guess. If you guys yeah. approve it tonight, we're going to drop a bid. We'll know. Okay. But what about less than a month? We'll have to buy it completely, evaluate it, and uh, we can bring it back in June or July. But I think right now the June meeting has been kind of bypassed. What kind of a, how large of a team would this be? I don't know. So it's just, just up to the company that you're going to be in. We've worked with one company, they usually send one person. So it may end up being that company that bids it and actually gets the bid, who knows. But if they do, they'll probably have to hire another firm on the side to do the wage and hour portion. That's what I'm looking at, probably more expensive. But my question is, if you're not making it compliant, because the big drive is just to make sure it's compliant with wage and hour. Because if you look in the paper, a lot of counties, cities, and businesses lose a lot of money in wage and hour compliance. And the problem that things are confusing or documents aren't good, you lose a lot of money. Because actually, wage and hour times will actually just allow stuff that is just confusing. Right, so. So will we be able to review the proposals, or is that something that you're going to? We use it in the tunnel that we can bring back here if you got yeah. okay. I don't want to. I don't want to waste time because it's going to be two months before we. Need how long we can? How long to get for ninety days? I think is what we wrote in there. Oh, okay. So we'll be able to review. So if we drop July. it two weeks, we get it back. Spin two weeks, and have to come up with the best. We can look at it early July or okay. July, July meeting. So you're looking for a motion to approve this for to move forward to get to uh, get close. So what it could be is we're going to see what it's in. Can you hear from us before you do that? People well, are going to get exactly that. No, I mean, no, they're on number B4. Do you want to move that up? Suspend the rule? Uh, yeah, let's move it up. I'll make a motion to extend. 
practices and new rules on how the officials are well, we, we need to move that up as an agenda item and then so they can speak to this agenda item. We don't have to move anything up. Okay. If we get a motion to suspend the rules and it's voted on. So I'll make a motion to suspend no. the rules. No, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd probably get these now for the we got plenty of time. You got unlimited time. All right. So. Well, I'm going to uh, <laughs> My name is Mark Smith, and I'm an appointed official under the Tennessee Constitution. The clerk and master is appointed by the chancellor for a six year term. I've been in since 2016, and I have not heard a word on from We keep hearing all we've got to do is the law. Well, if we're going to assist them, that was started in 2012, and we're in 2024. And it's not working yet. Something is wrong. And Tyler and Eunice have been horrible to deal with. All of the clerks across the state hate dealing with them and get rid of them as quickly as they can. If we're going with them, we're getting ready to get set up for there's no telling how many hundreds of thousands of dollars are been wasted on this thing. Everybody who uses them hates them. In my office, we have a small office, but we have different kinds that they use, but they can't fits this to where it's uh, complied with what we do, it's going to be a waste of time. It's going to quite through for what we have to do. We have people, we rarely have people that go to lunch because they can't get out and back quickly enough for a lunch hour. Yet they're saying Cronus is going to automatically take out a lunch hour. So every day we're going to have to go in and change it to show that we didn't have a lunch hour. It's just going to be a real headache. And right now, uh, to do something that's been hanging on for 12 years, there's no need to go fast on this. We need to look and see what the people want. Uh, and basically, it's having us do what David's been doing, is shifting the burden from him to us. And it's not going to affect that much, and it's not going to help anything. It's a waste of time. I've never been talked to anybody, by anybody, on Cronus, what it does, and how it's going to help us. Everybody that has it, hates it, and says, keep it away from it as long as you can. But other than that, I don't have anything to say. Can you give us the name of the clerks you talked to? Probably? No, I'm not. Because I don't want them to be harassed because they hate it. Have they worked on it? The, the ones that have it tell me, and I ask them how they like it, they stay away from it as long as you can. I mean, what, there's no hurry on it. What did they work with? Like what? What the, the, the departments have been changed, and I'd rather not say because I don't want them to get in trouble from someone going after them. The sheriff's office hates them. And it's being crammed down our throats, whether one through nine, all the Republicans. Well, it's the law. Well, it's a private act. We can change it just like you can change the 1933 act. We don't have to go with Cronin. And I don't know how it's going to help us. You know, we've got some people to come in at 8, some people to come in at 7, some people to stay late, some people wait four days a week. We've got part-time people. And if they're going to have to tailor this to everybody in my office, that's going to cost a lot of money. If you're going to have just, if you're spending a, a guessing at $100,000, I was going to triple that because they know how to charge. Tyler, the company that's going to no, Tyler and use. Tyler's not to do it. So if Tyler had it in 2013. Yeah. No, Tyler's never been in. They're nothing to do with each other. Who's doing it now? Cronus is your oh, timekeeping. Tyler is your financial. The two that work together. So it's use. No, Tyler. Okay. Mm -hmm. But Cronus that's why we haven't been told anything other than it's coming. No one has come in and sat down and said, "This is what happens." All we're told is you got to do it because it's the law. Well, that's the law. We've got a private act here with one of the few counties that operates on a private act. Why we're doing that, I don't know. But now you've got to see, you've got to go back to 1933 to deal with the private act. You got a 2012 private act. You know that can be changed too. So what does help look like? Pardon me. What does help look like to you? I don't know what help looks like. I'm not sure. You know, what we're doing now, we have to, every time we call Tony Weston, she takes care of us. We get our timesheets in, and I've never heard any complaints. 
if he does anything wrong or that it takes too much time. We have nine or ten sheets that go in each time. Uh, you know, I don't know whether we're going to have a time clock, whether we're going to do it on the computer, how we're going to do it. So what, what are you presently using, a time clock or we have time sheets? Sheet we have time sheets. Time sheet. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you let us enter that into the computer to go to them, and, and we do it ourselves, we can do that, because that's basically what we're doing now. As we get it in, usually we get it in Thursday or two on Friday. We try to get it in Thursday, because we don't want to rush Tony. Well, I mean, a lot of that ends up being double work because, you know, you have to write things down, then transfer it over to a computer, and that, that right there takes a lot of time. So if you just send it straight into a computer, it saves a lot of time. Well, I, I remember when I, you know, back when I was teaching, and I had I had a manual grade book, and I put all my grades in, into the, and then I had, I transferred it over to my computer. And I thought, well, why don't I give me a grading program that just, I can just enter it in. That solved a lot of my problems. We are just having to a spreadsheet that they're able to upload into the payroll system. They're not, they're not having to double enter. We, we do. We, submit we take that spreadsheet and we have to do it. 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 That we then manipulate when we get it from payroll. So you've got it. Uh, it's Excel back on back spreadsheet, so we don't get all the detailed time sheets. Yeah, but this is what this is going to be part of what I'm talking about. Appreciate it's it. on the back cover. That's a spreadsheet. So you key that into a spreadsheet. Yes. Okay. We do. We do. An Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Sir. So that the finance department provides to us out of all the employees, pay, raise, and all that stuff. So when you key that into this. So you guys have to take it and re-enter it. And we it. just manipulate the spreadsheet, copy, yeah. paste, to, to create an import to import into the compiler unit. you got to remem remember that he's talking about giving to us Thursday and Friday. They're being paid three Friday. So there's no good alignment with these timesheets, and we don't get timesheets necessarily. Yeah. And that so what would you what would you propose, sir? What what is your proposal? Well, I don't know what uh, the Munich or the uh, Cronus proposal is because no one's ever explained it. No one has come by. No one has come and sat down and said, "This is how it'll work." And I've been doing this for eight years. This has been going on for twelve years. So, I mean, there shouldn't be any real hurry on it if you've been a dozen years trying to implement it. Well, sit down and talk to the folks and show us what you're doing. That, like I say, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the, the personnel in there to implement this. Yeah, that's what the, the RFP that, would be to get the consultants to come and talk to you. Is that they have had this program just however long, and, and yet have, here we are still asking for more money <laughs> because they have not been able to successfully implement it. They have sat here and before it's to this committee that it's our fault, that we're the ones that are hindering. I, well, that, that right there, I'm not, I'm not blaming. We're I told. I, know. I, I agree. The, but, the but you have thing. been said, you have been told that we, <laughs> we won't go on it. We're refusing to. But all we're hearing is we've had X amount of years to implement it. We haven't been able to do it. And now, in the middle of us not able to hire employees, needing more money to be able to retain staff, they need an additional $100,000 maybe to continue to implement this program that we just keep throwing money at. Um, as a financial management committee, that's the part that I would be concerned about. Is why do we keep having to dump money into this program? When I was able to implement a timekeeping program for $1,800 in my office for 34 people in two months. So, I don't, I don't know or understand, and I'm going to have a real hard time ever gaining confidence either in the system or who's running the system or whatever because of the history of how it's been implemented and the problems that some of the departments have experienced after implementation. Um, I don't have a problem with the system itself. 
But I would also like to know, a wage and hour gets thrown out a lot. I've never been told there's any wage and hour issues with my office. Audit has never addressed anything with me with regards to wage and hour. The finance department has never addressed anything with me. I would like to know what wage and hour issues we have that need to be fixed. Let me ask Mr. Smith, all these lunch periods that they work through, can you count those as hours worked? Uh, usually about half of that. Okay. Because they'll eat at their desk. Thank you. So it might be 15 minutes, it might be 30 minutes. But your count is, you're not counting as hours worked. No, so you're not putting them down nine No, I'm not, I'm not giving them overtime or okay. comp time. Exactly right there. See, you, you have two previous commissions that did really nothing. Get this done. Then you know you, you had the, the two the half of a commission for that, and now we we've been here two years. We're trying to get it done. So well, who asked? Who asked for to be That was in the that was done by the committee. That was done three commissions ago. So it's, it's only the, the county oh, commission and this committee. Four commissions ago. Responsibility yeah, for this and to implement it. It's this.
they've got to work with the other two thirds of the people that have done this. Okay? Yeah. We got we got six hundred and thirteen people that are underneath it. We've still got three hundred and six that are not. Okay. Well, so I could tell they got to deal with them, the majority, and to ask them to come in and help implement it whenever we can get a team. They're the ones telling us we have to go on this. So the law, say, okay, the well, law. It works. They're like, that. you're giving us pushback. The law is saying that. We're we're that no, no, it's not everything per the law. I give them everything that that law says that it means. That's They're right. interpreting it a different way. But again, yeah, why can't we get people in there as coaches, teachers, whatever, to help you get this thing underway? Oh, I mean, that, that's. Why can't you that's 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 what what do that? Yeah, all I also want to the county to pay my employees what they need to pay. So I can thank you. I'm not going to sell Kronos, honestly. I, 
I've used it with different companies for many, many years. Um, but it is one of the larger payroll systems in, in, the, in the United States, maybe in the world. Um, that doesn't mean it's the right thing for us, you know what I mean? So, but all I'm trying to do is meet the spirit of the law for the private act. And the private act says consolidated accounting systems. And, and so we've got to come to terms on whether you're getting the information you need and whether you're getting what you need and get to the spirit of the, the private act. Uh, I think there is a there's a match. We just got to keep working on. It. I think we got to understand what your what your frustrations are. We've got to commit through finance, David. If it's more than an email, if it's an email, set up a meeting for you guys to go through and understand the pluses and minuses of permits. I think we got to do that. There's just to me, you're not getting, you haven't gotten. I think the full download of permits, and that's not saying David hadn't done his job. I just don't think it's happened yet. So I think we've got to do that. We've got to get you the information. We, yes. we, we've got to give them configuration. I, I have to talk to David. I have to give him that. That's the Yeah, 
means that everybody is supposed to be on Kono. So we haven't reached out to the department to give you a heads up until it's time for you to go on Kronos, and then at that point, we sit with you, we walk through your personnel policy, we ask your practices, and that's when we, that's when I answer all these questions that you guys have been bringing up. So and we offer you that's why I was kind of blindsided when I did reach out to somebody and they were like, nope, I'm not doing it. And that, and we'll give that's when I started all of it. And we'll give them because we can tell they say they're doing these things, but we can tell them they're doing these things. So, when it's presented to whichever department is up next, that's when we sit with you and read through the policy, figure out your practices, how you need this to work. That's when I get into all the details. Have you published the Everybody's schedule? different. Have you published the schedule? Well, I try. And an email may want to respond when they're ready. And what's, what are you asking? It's on the email right here attached. When they're available. I mean, are you, are you asking them to take some action? We're asking them to provide us an available time. Okay. I, I don't know the day is. Like, I don't know. I mean, I was going to do that. Have you offered up some time? Yes. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, before it's meeting, I kind of pause with you guys a little bit. Yeah, they do have an issue. Give them the right to We're not trying to fight. What we're trying to do is figure out what's going on uh, because all we've had is crickets. And you can also understand the frustration of out of nowhere you're contacted saying, you're going on this, now it's your time, you got to do this by a certain day. Like that's, there's been no communication before that. So I understand if that has been how they planned to implement it, but yeah, that, that didn't go over well. <laughs> I think she needs well, to reach out to me to say, hey, this is what's happening. If she reached out to us, let's be clear. Here's our yeah. We got an email from you. Yeah, I'm not talking about me. Okay, well, thank you. You reached out to us, said you were ready, and we said we were ready to like go. three years ago. No. I'll bring you the email. She I reached out to us. I, I wasn't part of it three years ago as far as she reached out to me. Hey, recently, I think we yeah. asked Tony, and then she forwarded it to me, yeah. and um, we just had... I was trying to implement, I'm, I'm one person. Right. Chronos, and I did the implementation for the senior's payroll. And you run the payroll, too. And I run the payroll. So, 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 so here's the message that you all are getting. I only have one person, I'm only one person. That's the only way I can implement it. They're giving a bunch of pushback. We need more money to be able to implement this. But we're the reason they can't implement it. So, I don't know. Okay. Apparently, it's on you all to get this implemented. So, I mean, we said all along, we're not opposed to going on it, but we don't have very much information on it. And when we ask questions, we're people just push back, and we're and we're we're being difficult. Okay. So, so as I said, I this, this is where we're trying to get the team to help you. Okay, we're trying to fund that team to help you understand all these questions. And if we don't get there, I don't understand how we you know, get them dedicated to a certain block of time in the calendar, and we should be good. I, mean, I, hope so. I just hope that we're all, that our employees I mean, are getting paid what yeah. they need to be paid, and we're all getting the positions that we need to be filled. Well, because that is certainly more important to be able to you do get having, the work that the county does. You do have a timekeeper in yeah. your office, right? Yeah. Okay. So that, super that team would yeah. come in, teach your timekeeper what, what they need to do. And that's, that's all we're trying to do. Oh, a single person that Yeah. I know you have a system like that. Yeah. Who, who keeps the system? Yeah. They, they clock in and out. And you, you oversee the hours? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I just have to put out the bed and then So they, they keep their own hours. Let me go back to Bob here. So, Bob, I, I agree. I think we do need to, and I, I, I'm getting a good sense of the history here. And uh, again, there's a lot of water that's going under the bridge. But I think we're just trying to solve the problem here. Um, I, I, I actually think that the 100,000 is reasonable to develop a team of people that can work with each of you to help you implement, help you answer your questions. Um, I don't think that's unreasonable. I've been in some more county firms. I, that's actually pretty cheap. Uh, I guess pretty cheap. It, it, it How much have we already spent on Well, I, okay. Let's, 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 I'll get you. I, 
five years, an estimate could be larger, could be smaller. Likely, I don't know that you give a consultant a, a number that comes in under that. Um, so I, I just think that, um, and maybe we approve it um, contingent upon you giving us some detail to support that. Um, and maybe that's what we roll into the July, um, the next meeting then, to actually, I guess, see what you've got proposal was. But I, I'm, I'm not alarmed by the 100,000 just because I think it's going to take that to get this this at least. And it may take more, but I mean, that's frustrating. I, I'm a taxpayer, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, well, but can you put out what you're going to get for the 100,000? That's, 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 that's what we're going to That's what we're at. We're going to RFQ it out. Yeah, in, the, the in July, we're going to be able to says they need to provide a technical proposal, which would yep. be the man hours and support and the price proposal, which would be the cost. So. Thank you. 
I'm here on behalf of Chad Media. I've been with County for 18 years on promos and not on promos. I have my own opinions about it. But my biggest thing is, and it always has been, and I think the frustration from everybody is being forced and told you're doing it without asking the elected officials what their thoughts are on it first. And it clearly states in here on the, on the minute in E that Superintendent Langford stated that he would like for the elected officials to be invited to the next meeting to discuss the Corona's implementation. And then a next email went out talking about the implementation a couple of days later, but nowhere invites the elected officials to this meeting. I know Holly knew nothing about it. It got canceled. It got canceled in the same of the fire was invited. Okay. Well, Holly didn't know about tonight's Wait. meeting, and Tony isn't here because they're both at conferences. But nobody was, that, I think that's all the miscommunication and the lack of communication. Um, has been the biggest thing. And I think that's where the majority of the frustration comes from. It's less about the product products than more about the I think that is part of it, but it's also the communication of talking about working through it, like Miss Carolyn said. You know, she asked questions, she's asked questions, there's emails of questions. And maybe they are getting answered, maybe they're not getting answered. But until it comes to a setting like this, it's when things get brought up and it's addressed. And, and it should be like that. But one, one thing, you know, talking through the email can be very complicated. But yeah, you sit down that's right. and showing you, and I think that's a whole lot better, and that's what we're trying yeah. to get yeah. as a team to show you. Okay, work right there with you rather than talk through text or through emails because it gets very confusing. Or more secondly, ask the elected officials that are running their offices not having somebody tell them how to run the office. Okay. They were elected for a reason and they that. know how to run that office, so they should be asked and not told. Okay. I think that's a huge thing. Okay. Thanks. Did I make any other questions? Do we need to make a motion to go back? Uh, All right, we're going to go back under the rules, so okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I will move my, over. my motion. So go ahead and, and put the bid out there, and then in July we find out what the bid is, what it, what's going to be done as far as the coaching, the support, and all that for each one of these staffs uh, in in their uh, respective offices. Okay. So, and I think it would be helpful for you to get feedback from the elected officials about exactly what they, their needs are, right? I mean, once you get this proposal, they say, hey, we've got x products dedicated to this, and here's what we can do. And maybe you've got a question that's not been articulated in this proposal. I, all I'll say is just from this point forward, just have the communication. You know what I'm saying? And if you do, I think this process will go with you. Um, uh, and so if, when you get the proposal, and, and I'm sure we'll make it public, so I mean, it's not something we're going to hide. So we'll give the elected officials a chance to look at it and see if there's something in that proposal that you don't understand, that you don't agree with, or you think is missing. Um, and we can address that before we, you know, vote to approve it. Okay, I put the motion out there. I just want to be clear for the motion is to approve the RFQ request for the Chronos consultant via the with the finance. Yes. What caveats were you wanting to put on just, that? Just to find out what the working plan is going to be in order to work with each one of these uh, elected officials' offices. So basically, you want them to bring back the results of the RFQ to this committee. That, and like I say, they, they should be uh, emailing all those questions in so that we get, we, we get at least a beginning point. Because I know that they're going to come up with more uh, questions once they do get into the office. I think the best thing to do is we'll email the RFQ responses to the elected officials, get their questions, yeah. bring the questions and RFQ back here to the committee. Tell, tell all, those of you that are not boss, tell all your folks. And you July, July, that ain't been long drive for So we all have been implemented so far. That's my motion. I don't, I first of all, this is slow down. We've got a lot of ground to cover, and I, I just want to be ready to go in July to make a decision and make sure your needs are met, and so we can proceed. We'll need to see. 
IT recommendation? That is the discussion is attached to your packet to move forward with the health department. They do need some connect connectivity. How also, the only issue with it, he needs is connectivity. And then there is two personnel policies. There's the county personnel policy and the state of Tennessee.
one computer, or one lab with a heart, with a machine, and one tablet. Is that, is that what they need? Yeah, it's multiple. Is it? He says he has computer issues for his people logging in. It'd be much easier if we walk a tablet. This is what they need right here? Yes. Okay. Computer safe. I understand it. It may have went up a little bit on the center down. Any discussion for it? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Four is moved. What's that? Four is yeah, moved. Four is moved. Four is moved. Yes. So agenda topic five, information for employees who are paid current. This came back from the uh, May budget meeting. I'd like to have a motion to reconsider that. We've got some new information with several departments coming online with Kronos. And we've heard from the elected officials today. It doesn't sound like the current pay periods have been that much of an issue. Um, so I'd like to obviously bring it up for reconsideration. Um, Can't automate without a whole back. What's that? Can't automate it without a whole back. Right now we're guessing it up to a week. No, they're seeing the mess. These payroll sheets are saying so a week of that is not actual payroll. We're seeing this to Monday, and it's the work we call it Friday. So, <coughs> so these times they're telling us they're sending are not actual times. Another option. Yeah. In other words, when they send us up these spreadsheets on Monday, we'll be, they're being paid through Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are best guess. Okay. Paid for time that they have worked. Yeah. Right, for a whole week. And when we talked to how that was handled down in was it Murfreesboro, we believe. Yeah. See, Murfreesboro, they basically gave the employees a week to fix the issue. Because they had the same issue. They gave them a month, is what you're saying. They basically gave them, in other words, if you were paid right. that, say if the, the Monday was a cutoff, then we, you gave them the next week. So that way, you know, that Monday is a cutoff, you just put a week in there. Well, that's yeah. I don't know. I, I that's know, all the same. I know Terry brought up about uh, former Mayor Holt and his solution of one uh, day and quarter. And during, like I say, it takes seven quarters, almost two years to, to work this out. We wouldn't have paid a quarter day at all. Plus, there's a couple of things you're going to run into. Say we move it. Won't be as bad for June, because like she mentioned, if you move it one day, if you move it to Friday, it'll be bad in June. The next meeting week to Monday. So the same thing. The thing will end up with a two week hold back, everybody's going to end up with a win for a week. But each quarter, those employees will just have four one whole day on them. So the sheriff's department is two. They'll have two when you get done. They'll have two when you get done. They have one right now. So they'll be in that group, too. They already got a hold back. They have a hold back. Um, EOS has a whole bag, ECC has a whole bag, um, Health, Depart Health Department. And um, Highway. Highway, I already mentioned Highway. Yeah, I think it's already on new hires. What now? It's on new hires. They haven't started new hires yet because we're waiting to get them to go on time. By the way, we've got two states of employees, one with whole bags and one without. <laughs> so you're going to add another whole layer in there to deal with. Now, I thought you gave us a how many people in the county? About 200. About 200. Yeah. About 228. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's the majority, but it's several departments. Yeah, I know scattered in different departments. Your big ones are held back, but the other ones are not. So I know I'm. I'm mine is two things that's going to make change management much harder if they see the base of going on to a timekeeping system. So, Colin, your your resolution or your proposal is to pull this back and the budget committee. Basically, well, it came back. It, it came back. It came back. From well, I'm saying you you want to uh, reconsider the recommendation that we made. Correct. I don't think it's a strong recommendation at this point. It's got no no time frame to it. Um, all the feedback we've heard today and. Other 
feedback that the holdback period hasn't been a hurdle to implementing the financial act at this point. So I'm worrisome to, to just push out hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of county money. Well, Aubrey's going through budgets and a lot of other priorities are happening on. Um, I'll tell you why we have an audit budget. Aubrey's plans. Let's take a think about those folks. They're, they're going to be on chrono, so the first week is correct. And their part time's fine, but the second week they actually have to put it down the weekend for the employees when they think they're going to work. Okay. And they have earnings scheduled that might within those two weeks and rotate. So a lot of them do 8 to 5 Monday through Friday every week. So if they've got leave and long term employees, really not a big issue, but the library is supposed to make more of an issue. So does the library get on chronos without? They're on it right now, but it causes them a lot of confusion, to say the least, with the library. Well, the chronos is helpful. They've had to keep them until now. But, but the holdbacks are going to make some back into there. Okay, so we voted to do option two, right? Okay, but we didn't tie a date to that. Correct. Now, we're coming back, and I see in your letter, David, you're recommending option five. David, one of which works pretty good. Is, which Unlike options one and three, no employee will be short paid during any payroll. Right. Okay. So that that will help us on any employee morale and anything else. So why why is there a cost of only two hundred thirty nine less as compared to two hundred and seventy with option two? You pull out the exempt department heads. Those department heads, what we would do would be take them kind of treat them like you do the elected official, you take their salary and divide it by twenty six. Okay. And just spread us out. But you won't, they won't see any short cut. They won't. They'd actually pick up a few days if you did it in June, and the next year's are overall, every two weeks would be a little smaller because you spread it further. But no, and then the same thing when they leave, and you know, there's so few department heads, and they have leave them in here long term, you just settle up on the vacation and sick of the time. That saves some money. Okay, so I don't see a date specific on this option. When's a good time to implement it? All those options would have been best to do on the last payroll in June. If they're, if they're willing to do either option, it would really straighten out the payroll. It's been this way for, I've been here for if option. If option, I guess this is option five, if it will only cost us 239 versus 270, yeah, no short change in any employees, I would like to make the motion that we would, that we accept option five with a date certain of the last payroll put period of June to implement the program. That will that will solve that because I know we've talked about this for years now, and uh, and I think at this point we've got a committee that the biggest problem has been able somebody biting a bullet on this two hundred plus thousand dollars never could get a commission to do that. Mm -hmm. But to fix the problem, well, this is what we have to do. And I think to get the full commission to bite, it's got to it's got to have some and a, and a date certain of the end of the payroll. The last payroll in June. The last payroll in June, yes. If you say that's the best time to do it. That's what we could add those extra days to the department heads and spread them out next year. Okay. That's my motion. Is there a second? And I favor that one because I get nothing out of it. Pardon me? I favor that one because I get nothing out of it. That's what the fuck you do. Just from a, uh, from a policy or from a rules standpoint, did I need a, a second for my reconsideration motion past that before we? Yeah, you have to vote to reconsider. Yeah, you have to move past that. Okay, so can we get a second for my reconsideration to open sure. up? Sure, I'll a second. Oh, okay, but that's how we should vote. Yeah, for the reconsideration, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now on to the Now we'll go to this motion. So that uh, needs a second on yours? Yeah. You've already made the motion. We don't have a second yet, but David, so what you're saying here is that in the last payroll, that this will all be synced up, washed. Okay. So basically what you'll do is for your employees that are hold back, you're dropping five extra days so their payroll within, you know, five days earlier that Friday or the day before the payroll. Your department heads are so many accrual days. Is it one or two? You would show them their last payroll in June or they would have any accrual crews carried over next year. We'd divide them by 26 and pay them through. And then chronic subtract their um, vacation sick and when they quit, we'd just level up with them then. And if they're short, then we got to determine we can get it back in front of them. It would simplify it a lot for the least amount of cost. Uh, 
some of the others like to hear some of the other folks that are not here. I would like to hear what they've got to say about it. And uh, I just like to put it back in old business. The only problem with that is I know it's going to be good. We're not going to meet until July, so if we want to kick this down the road a little longer, we'll look at it for the next fiscal year. Well, we're not going to have probably have the budget done by then either. I think right now we're hearing a lot of positive numbers from this Esther's office that they're getting pretty close on the field. So you, you may be looks like it's only going to be through June on your fields as of right now. You may be getting late June or we do all of you. It's going to be a lot wider than I'm going to God for lack of a second. How long was it until July? If we won't try to find another date where it would be advantageous to try to do that. Because we have like a 26 payroll, so we may look on another line up to play. Yeah, we're not going to. All right. It's not going to get the budget in uh, for June 1st. So we, I'd like to make a motion just to put this in old, old business. Motion technique. And I'm angry. Yeah, you know that. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, he, he's a chairman, so. I mean, yeah. Let's go get to old business. I'm just uh, peeing on <laughs> New business C resolution for completion of 2012 Act. We've got 20 minutes, so if we need to adjourn now, we can move everything to old business. But Make a motion, move it to old business, since we do that now. Do you want me to address D? The, uh, we're D. Why do you want us to tell? The libraries have called us, and some of them were wanting to work for people during that day. Some of them didn't know what to do, so we need to kind of give them some guidance when the buildings are closed, what happens with their part time employees based on. They're kind of nice and we don't know really what the deal on It's not clear. If they're scheduled for that day, I feel like they should be paid. But if they're not scheduled, they should, just like every other employee, they shouldn't be paid. What about Henderson? Well, they don't have regularly scheduled what they're telling us right now. Somebody was working that day. Regularly scheduled. That was part of time. But, if but somebody had to be working that day before she's telling us. Well, I'm sure like each week they schedule their part time people, but like all the other libraries, like the part time person always works. How about if this, if we just send them an email, whoever was supposed to be working that day, part time, what they were supposed to be working, they should be paid nothing to do with schedule what they should have been working. They should have known the day before what people were working. Okay, is that a good answer? Would you guys be good with that? I think that's fair. Let me say that again. Basically, tell them on their part time whoever was supposed to be working the next day, because I think the mayor told them the night before or the day before, so they had time. Whoever was supposed to be working the next day for part time gets paid just like a full. Not scheduled or anything, they were known to be working the next day by that library. Yeah. Yeah, you but Big Hendersonville's issue. Every part time employee that's. Big Hendersonville's issue, too. They're saying they're getting shorted or they feel like they were. Do so you need a motion or is that just a recommendation? Uh, it's not part of the policy, so. Are we just doing a temporary resolution here? And putting this to old business, or are you trying to get this off today? How about, how about saying that and then seeing the resolution to the committee to look at for the um, personnel policy to fix the issue? We can make an adjustment personnel policy and bring it back to address that specific issue. I work with Jason Ryan on that. Okay. So we'll call this temporary and then just temporary so solution and then get a paid personnel policy. Yep, still that paid an interim solution. And just, yeah, if you vote for interim solution and send it to personnel policy to get clarification. Do we need a motion for that? I don't think so. I think just is fine. Yeah, because well, the policy's not clear, so. Yeah. When is that up? He's the greatest guy right here. Right. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Uh, I appreciate everybody's time.